In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a neural network in five minutes. I'm also going to talk about the input layer, the output layer, the metrics, and the loss function, how to customize all of those functions for the task at hand that you're trying to achieve with a neural network. So let's get started. So for today's video, I'm going to be working on Google Colab, which will basically help us to run and build neural network. You see over here a sequential model, uh, which is the basic building block of a neural network, and basically three layers, a layer with 50 neurons, a layer with 25 neurons, and a layer with 10 neurons. To define a neural network, there are two important layers that you certainly need to define, the input layer and the output layer. We're going to start from the input layer. The input layer is simply defined by defining the input shape. The input shape takes a tuple, which is could be a 2D dimension. For example, if you're working with images, this could be a 256 by 256 pixels tuple. Or if you're just simply working with a data frame, you could directly insert the number of features that you've got by switching to the input dimensions instead of the input shape. Defining the input dimensions or shape allow us to know how many parameters we've got in our neural network, which is basically how many weights and how many uh, biases we have defined in all those linear classifiers. We can look at the number of parameters by calling the model.summary function, which will show us that for our first layer, which has 50 neurons, we have around 700 parameters. If you do the math, 50 neurons, we've got a total of 13 dimensions. So 50 times 13, that would be 650. So we're still missing an extra 50. Well, we still have the bias, right? So we'll have to add one bias for each neuron and that will translate into 700 parameters. And that's exactly the number we're seeing over here. Always remember that the main difference between the input dimensions and the input shape is that the shape allows you to define multiple dimensions and it's specifically helpful if you're working with images. The other layer that we have to define for our network to function correctly is the output layer. The output layer depends completely on our task. So if we're trying, for example, to solve a regression task, we will have to use a linear activation function. If you're trying to predict exactly one value, then you will have to use one neuron. However, if you're trying to predict multiple values, then you will have to insert that number over here. For example, three values will correspond to three neurons. When we're trying to solve a classification problem instead of a linear regression problem, we will have to use a sigmoid function and use exactly one neuron. One neuron is enough to classify two classes because its output will either be zero or one. However, if we're trying to classify multiple classes, we will have to use softmax function and use over here a number of neuron corresponding to the number of classes. So if we have, for example, five classes, then you'll have to use five neurons. We use a softmax function instead of sigmoid function because the sum of the probabilities that a softmax will output will be one, and that will allow us to know which class is the most probable between all those classes that we have just classified. Either ways, don't forget that your output will be the probability of each class when you're working on a classification task. Now that you know how to customize your input and output to any task at hand, we can look at the loss function. The loss function is a very important aspect of every neural network because it allows us to calculate how off we are in our prediction from the real values, which is the basic building block of the next step, which will be the training. You can define the loss of a neural network by simply adding it in the compile state. Um, a loss function has to be suitable to the task at hand. So if you're working, for example, on linear regression uh, task, it will be best to choose either the mean absolute error or the mean squared error, depending on whether you're trying to penalize outliers or not. There are many other metrics that you can use. Take a look over here on the Keras uh, guide and basically choose a function suitable to the task. If you're working on a classification task, on the other hand, go for a binary cross entropy or a categorical cross entropy if you're using a softmax function with multiple neurons. However, in the case of one neuron and a sigmoid function, binary cross entropy is what you're looking for. Uh, you can define many other functions that you want to keep track of, like the uh, accuracy, the F1, the AUC. If you're interested in those metrics, you will find them in the history that will be returned once you fit your model using your training data. And don't forget to define the number of epochs. The number of epochs is basically how many times your data is going to go inside the neural network and how many times we're going to look at the loss function and see if we're doing better or worse and modify the weights of our linear classifiers, which are the neurons. 
There are many loss function and money metrics that Keras provide us with, so don't forget to take a look on this documentation page and choose one that you're interested in keeping track of. Well, lastly, I'm going to show you basically my methodology in choosing the number of neurons and the number of, ne of layers for each neural network. I always like to go for a pyramid scheme. So we start wide and we make it smaller and smaller by decreasing the number of neurons. So I always like to start with 50 neurons on my first layer, go to 25 and then go to 10. And here over uh, you will have your output layer, which could be either one or multiple neurons. If you're going for multiple neurons, then I would suggest going for the reverse pyramid as well. So once you summarize your information through these layers, you could go for the opposite. So start going wide again to the number of neurons that you're trying to choose. And that, for example, for, would look something like this. So you would go back from 10 to 20 and maybe back to 50 if you have 50 neurons on your output layer. I hope this simple methodology will help guide you through your quest for finding the perfect neural network for your task. Hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.